Hello everybody and welcome back to the second shelf and to another tag video. If you are now familiar with the fact that I don't do tag Tuesday because I upload on Wednesday, so it's tag Wednesday again. And this time it's the literary fiction book tag created by Jasmine over at Jasmine Reads. I'll leave a link to her original tag video down below and I will also leave links to a couple of booktubers that I already watched uh, who uh, did the tag. Eric uh, from Lonesome Reader, for instance, um, Steve, Steve Donahue, the ranty, as he, as he said himself, the ranty biased version of the tag, which is certainly worthwhile watching. Uh, but watch your blood pre pressure. Uh, Laura from Reading in Bed um, and also Brian from Bookish. He did not quite do the tag. He did a, a, a review of My Sister the Serial Killer and in the course of that review, he talked about uh, the issues of that tag, literary fiction, what is literary fiction, and so it's worthwhile watching all of them. And the first prompt is, or the first question is, how, you do, how do you define literary fiction? And my answer is quite short, I don't. I always struggle with this term um, that is uh, in, in the English uh, speaking world, something of an issue. If you following my channel, you know that I uh, uh, come from Germany and we don't have that uh, term, literary fiction. We just have an, a, a, an overall term for fiction, which we call belletristic, which comes from belle lettre, the, so the the fiction version of, of books. Um, and of course, we also have, you know, we call books detectives or um, uh, sci-fi or dystopian, uh, but we don't have the term genre fiction either. So I grew up in a, in a sort of literary world where this term d didn't even exist, which, by the way, doesn't mean that the German literary world and especially critics are not snobbish. No, 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 no. But it, it's a term that I struggle with. Um, so I'm not going to define it. And if you watch the videos of other booktubers, you will see that they all have difficulties defining the term, which says something. Uh, and in the end, they all come up with a definition that I would say uh, defines for them what is a good book. Um, and uh, uh, I'm with Brian from Bookish, who... Uh, made, makes this explicit that it's in fact you just ask whether it's a good book not uh, and not um, and and that's the the main focus but anyway I uh, I mean I'm very interested uh, whether you have a definition um, which is not like pages long of literary fiction so if you do um, enlighten me down in the comments but I I don't I mean, I use the term, I have to admit it, because I'm, you know, talking about books in English. But if I, if I really think about it, it doesn't really mean anything uh, for me. And the rest of the questions are all uh, focusing on a certain aspect of literature, you know, character, uh, writing. And in my version of um, this tag, uh, I left... Uh, the, the two words literary fiction out of the question. So, for instance, the second question is name a literary fiction novel uh, with a brilliant character study. And I just will give you a brilliant uh, character study in a novel. And for that prompt, I chose Patricia Heithmiss, uh book, first book in the Ripley series, The Talented Mr. Ripley, first published in 1955. Patricia Heismas, of course, does need an introduction. Uh, she writes crime novels. And uh, Mr. Ripley is, I think, one of her most brilliant creations. And in the first book, The Talented Mr. Ripley, uh, we are introduced to this character, a uh, very handsome, uh, gentleman-like uh, man who wants to be part of the, the rich and the beautiful. And, of course crime ensues. But the way uh, Patricia Heithmiss uh, portrays this character 
uh, his involvement from um, uh, a scared little boy who, uh, who is called a sissy by his aunt and who never quite fits in and how that evolves at in the end into a murdering uh, a sociopath, I think it's, it's brilliant. It's a brilliant character study. Uh, question number three, name a novel that has experimental or unique writing. And for this one, I chose uh, Vendela Vida, The Diver's Clothes Lie Empty, first published in 2015. Um, Vendela Vida is an American writer, and this book uh, is based on uh, her own experience when she uh, was traveling and her bag was stolen. So our main character travels to Morocco, to Casablanca, and then her luggage is stolen with all her identification. She cannot identify herself, and then through various twists and turns, she um, gets a bag with a different uh, ID. She assumes that um, identity. And the novel is about travel. Um, you know, what happens, what can happen when you travel. But it's the deeper layer of the book um, is about identity. And that it might be freeing to um, to lose your original identity and assume a new one. So I, I chose this, I should tell you why I chose this for, for this question, because the book is written in second person. And I've read a couple of books uh, in second person and mostly I'm not a fan, but I thought this one was brilliant. The second person really worked. Uh, it wasn't obnoxious after a while, like it tends to be, at least for me. So I chose it for the unique writing because of the very successful in, uh, uh, second person point of view. On to question number four. And you might have noticed that I, again, look to the side because I have the questions here. So that's why. But you knew that already. I didn't have to point that out. Anyway, question number four. Name a novel with an interesting structure. And for this uh, question, I picked Evie Wilde's book, uh, All the Birds Singing, first published in, look again, 2013. Uh, Evie Wilde uh, was born in 1980 uh, in London, but she grew up in Australia uh, and now lives uh, again in the UK. Um, All the Birds Singing um, opens with our main character, Jake. She lives on a raggedy British island all by herself, uh, and her only companions are her dog and a flock of sheep. Uh, and we learn early on that she chose that isolation for some reason, stuff that happened in her past. Um, then... Uh, the sheep get uh, killed one by one. I mean, not all of them, but that's how, you know, the, the book opens, that somebody kills her sheep. And then why I chose this book for a unique structure is um, the, the next chapters, we slowly go back. So the novel is told backwards from the present. Each chapter goes um, back. Um, uh, a couple of years and we learn about um, uh, our uh, hero's past and what happened and in the end we will know why she chose to isolate herself on that island and we will also learn something about um, who and why um, those sheep are killed. Um, I think um, t telling a story backwards from um, a, a present situation is always tricky. Um, I've read some of the books that, that try that um, and oftentimes it doesn't work because you as a reader already know too much of the present to find the past interesting. And I thought the way Evie Wilde did it was really, really good. So you didn't have this idea, oh, now we're going back, but I knew already. No, it's really interesting how to find out about her life slowly by going back in the past. So this a uh, quite unusual structure uh, was used really successfully in this book. Um, question number five, name a novel that explores social themes. Um, and for this one, you might think, uh, what? 
But for this one, I picked The Hunger Games, uh, book number one uh, by Susan Collins, first published in 2006. Um, it's called a YA book, so it's um, by, you know, standards of literary fiction, if you want to employ that word, it's probably not taken seriously. Uh, but I think that that is a mistake. Um, I don't have to tell you about the book. It's about this dystopian future uh, where people are uh, living in, in certain sections of uh, society, very poor, whereas the rich, the very few rich, um, live in the capital. And each year, uh, two, two young people of each section, a man, a boy and a girl, are chosen to play the Hunger Games, so to fight each other uh, to the death. Uh, I thought there are a couple of things that I really thought were brilliant in the book. First of all, um, the gender roles. Our hero Katniss is a young girl um, and she her specialty is she hunts. The man she later uh, falls in love with is a baker. So gender roles are uh, defined in a different way and I think especially for young readers that's very good. Uh, second, um, I think that this is one of the best books to show you um, the social issue, that's why I picked it, uh, the 99% of the population versus the 1% of the population. And it also shows you something about um, the the uh, the way we use social media so the the whole thing of publicizing of um uh using um things like twitter uh to to show our lives i thought uh, it's a book worth reading and not only for young readers but certainly for young readers it i would always give the book to young readers, but also for uh, adult readers. So I have no problem uh, choosing this book for the question, um, um, a novel that explores a, a social theme. Um, number six, uh, name a novel that explores the human condition. Um, that was difficult in a way, because I think a good book uh, a good work of literature, of fiction, always explores the human condition. Otherwise, why would you read it and why would you write it? Um, I chose a, a crime fiction uh, for this one. I mean, I had to pick one. So I chose uh, a German book and I have to look up uh, who the translator was. So it's uh, Andrea Maria Schenkel, The Murder Farm, uh, translated uh, from the German by Anthea Bell, published in 2008, and the original German um, published in 2006. Uh, the, the German version is called Tannöd, but that's too difficult. We just stick with Murder Farm. Um, uh, it's based on a true story on of a murder of a whole family in a remote village in up in the mountains in, in Germany. Um, and um, the author takes this event that happened a long time ago, uh, she replaces it uh, after the Second World War, she changes the names so she, you know, she can fictionalize. And over the course of the novel, we learn not only about the murder, this whole family that gets wiped out, but also uh, we slowly learn about this community, this village, and the the background of the murdered family, but also some of the history that other people had uh, with the murdered family. And uh, we slowly learn why uh, this horrible murder happened. I thought it's a very slim book. Um, and if you're into that kind of, you know, crime um, uh, novel that is dark and more character driven um, than plot driven, even though the plot is important, then I can certainly highly recommend it. And we do learn something about the human condition when we read this book. Um, question number seven, name a brilliant literary hybrid genre novel. Well, from my point of view, from my starting point, I, I can't answer the question because I, I don't really you know, use the term literary fiction or don't want to use the term literary fiction versus genre fiction. But um, I picked a book 
that was um, long listed for the man Booker in 2015. But you could call it, if you want to uh, use the term, you could call it genre fiction because it's sci-fi. And that is Anna Smale's debut novel, The Chimes, published in 2015. So it's a dystopian sci-fi novel uh, set in London. Uh, Anna Smales, by the way, is a New Zealand a writer, a poet, and a, a, a musician. She plays the violin, and music plays an important role. Back to the earlier sentence. The book is set in a dystopian London where people, for some reason, some event that took place in the past can't really form uh, memories and the written word is uh, outlawed and forbidden. Instead, you have music uh, to communicate. And we follow a young man named Simon who comes to London in order to find out more about his parents. And then his journey takes him to the past uh, and we learn why um, the, the, the uh, written word was outlawed and, you know, plot ensues. Um, it's a very uh, tender book. Um, there is a, a, a the coming of age story of Simon. He falls in love uh, with um, one of his companions, an older not older, but older compared to him, man, uh, which is a very tender love story, uh, beautifully told. Uh, the story is really interesting, the way the music uh, plays this this uh, important role in the book. I, I loved it. I read it when it came out in 2015. Unfortunately, it didn't win the booker uh, in 2015. Uh, but it's one of the examples that um, you have... Uh, a, a work of fiction, uh, and everybody agrees, um, you know, literary critics and the booker judges that it's literary fiction, but you could easily call it genre fiction because it's sci-fi, which goes to show my point, you know, that this whole division between literary fiction and genre fiction doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I mean, take Jane Austen, for example. Romance? No, it's a classic. I mean, it employs all what we read in romance and we know that there will be a happy ending and that there are twists and turns and women fall for the wrong man, but eventually they choose the right one. You know, anyway. Question number eight. What genre do you wish uh, was mixed with literary fiction more? Obviously, I can't answer this question. Um, because it wouldn't make sense for me, but I wish that we would let go of this division um, and that we would just look like Brian um, uh, suggested in his video. We just look whether it's a good book. Anyway, I want to tag everybody who is interested in this topic and who hasn't done the tag because I think it's a extremely interesting and useful discussion. So, Everybody is tagged. <laughs> if you are not tagged already, uh, please do this and uh, talk about what you think is literary fiction and whether you think it makes sense to have that division between literary and genre fiction. So this was it for my Tag Wednesday. Um, I Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to your comments as always, and I'll see you all soon in the next one. Bye-bye.